Good afternoon and welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Please join in singing the entrance hymn, which can be found in the program, All Creatures of Our God and King.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. You're very, very welcome. You're very much at home here at St. Patrick's Cathedral, America's Parish Church. The Knights and Dames of Malta have always been spiritually at home here at St. Patrick's, so I'm glad you're here. Brother Bishops, Archbishop Rosansky of St. Louis, and Bishop Sanchez, <laughs> Bishop Jerome, my brother priests and deacons, leadership of our esteemed uh, sovereign ardor that we might offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass the more worthily we call to mind our sins and ask for the mercy of Jesus. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Clothe us, Lord our God, with the virtues of the most sacred heart of your Son. Set us aflame with his love, that conform to his image we may merit a share in eternal redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I myself am, am convinced about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to admonish one another. But I have written to you rather boldly, in some respects, to remind you because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in performing the priestly service of the gospel of God so that the offering up of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to boast in what pertains to God. For I will not dare to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to lead the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum I have finished preaching the gospel of Christ. Thus, I aspire to proclaim the gospel not where Christ has already been named, so that I do not build on another's foundation, but as it is written, those who have never been told of him shall see, and those who have never heard of him shall understand. The word of the Lord.
deeds. His right hand has won victory for him. His holy arm. be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man had a steward and he was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, What should I do? Now that the master is taking the position of steward away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that when I'm removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. And so he called in his master's debtors, one by one. And to the first he said, 
how much do you owe my master? And he replied, 100 measures of olive oil. And he said to him, here's your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. And then to another he said, and you, how much do you owe? And he replied, 100 measures of wheat. And he said to him, here's your promissory note. Write one for 80. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of the light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear uh, knights and dames of Malta, might I begin by applying to all of you in Malta those gracious compliments that St. Paul gave to the Romans in our first reading from God's holy word from the Bible this afternoon. You too, you, to use the phrase of St. Paul, are full of goodness. My brother bishops and priests will agree you're filled with goodness towards Jesus and his church. And for that, I say thank you. Now, while we're on St. Paul's letter to the Romans, would you listen for a second to uh, the other vocabulary that he uses in this passage? Here's some of the words, listen. God, grace, Jesus, sanctification, the Holy Spirit, can you detect one common characteristic of those selections from St. Paul's thesaurus this afternoon? What do they all have in common? They're all invisible, invisible. God, grace, the ascended Christ, sanctity, the Holy Spirit. We can't see them. They can't be studied in the laboratory they can't be seen under a microscope. They can't be detected on an MRI. They're unseen. So what St. Paul is teaching us this afternoon, knights and dames of Malta, is the biblical lesson of the primacy of the invisible. The primacy of the invisible. This is uh, mightily significant for the Apostle St. Paul who insisted, we walk by faith, not by sight. The Apostle who penned, we do not fix our gaze on what is seen, but what is unseen, because what is seen is transitory, while what is unseen lasts forever. It shouldn't surprise us when you think about it, no wonder St. Paul demands this primacy of the invisible, for he never laid his eyes on the one he acclaimed as Lord and Savior. He never touched him. He wasn't present for his parables, his miracles, his teaching. As the Anglican biblical expert Bishop N.T. Wright observes, St. Paul never shook hands with Jesus. And yet, for St. Paul, this unseen person, the second person of the most blessed trinity, 
was the pivotal, omnipotent, saving energy of the u universe, the most real person in the cosmos, and yet we can't take a selfie with him because we walk by faith, not by sight. You get the message here? It's important for us. The invisible in life is actually the most real. Faith, hope, and charity. Character, love, and loyalty. Duty, responsibility, reliability. Fidelity, honor. You just try to analyze those realities, to document them, to graph them, to chart them. Forget about it. They're unseen. <laughs> but they're still the most genuine realities around. Come to think about it, the Eucharist, the Eucharist in which we now participate celebrates the invisible. See, we can't verify empirically the existence of the God to whom we're now praying we can't prove the efficacy of the faith that brings us here. We can't win a bet that the words, this is my body, this is my blood, really works and changes bread and wine. But the folks that we call apostles and disciples, martyrs and saints, mom and dad, friends and family, knights and dames, they don't need proof that without the reality of the unseen, all that can be seen is but a hint of what's most sustaining in life. That's faith. That's the Holy Eucharist. Members of Malta, veterans and rookies of this noble, sovereign ardor of Malta, you and I pledge allegiance to the primacy of the invisible. Oh, to be sure, we have quite an abundance of externals, don't we? Capes and hats, medallions, lapel pins, pilgrimages, seen acts of love and service, especially to the uh, sick and suffering. But our undying noble fealty is to the realm of the supernatural, the spiritual, the invisible. All those visible aspects of our ardor, which I'm going to bless in a second, those visible aspects in which we rejoice are but pointers to the one who chastised Thomas. Thomas, you only believe because you see me. Blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. Nice to meet you. I have the honor to announce and proclaim that His Excellency Fra Marco Luzago, Lieutenant of the Grand Master of the Sovereign Military Hospitaller Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes and of Malta, and the Sovereign Council, have approved the proposals for membership in the order of those assembled here to be invested. Your Eminence, we request that the insignia of the order to be conferred upon these new members now be blessed. Dr. Kelly, I'm honored. Shall we stand for the blessing?
God, our Father, through the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, the cross has become for us a sign of life. Pour down your blessing upon these crosses which you have created. May those who wear them be blessed. Let them learn that the yoke of the Lord is not oppressive, that his burden is light. Let these crosses ever be a reminder of our faith, an inspiration to good, a help to salvation, a comfort and protection against all evil. Would the following candidates for conventual chaplains please come forward? The Most Reverend Jerome Fujio. The Most Reverend Mitchell T. Rosansky. Your Excellencies, please state your desire. I, Archbishop Mitchell Rosansky, desire to be received as a conventional chaplain into the Sovereign Military Hospital or Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes, and of Malta. I, Reverend Jerome Figio, Bishop of St. Thomas, I desire to be received as a conventual chaplain into the Sovereign Military Hospitalier Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes, and of Malta. Do you promise to be faithful to the noble traditions of the order, to participate in its services, and to have a special care for the poor and the sick, and to nurture the spiritual lives of the members of the order as conventional chaplains? I do so promise. I do so promise. On behalf of His Ex Excellency, the Lieutenant of the Grand Master, and of the Sovereign Council, I welcome you into this ancient hospitaller order of charity and chivalry, and will now present you with the cross of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta as a symbol of the <laughs> promise you have just made. Let's line them up. Congratulations. Would the following candidates for magistral chaplain please come forward? Reverend John W. Girati. Reverend Michael K. Jones, Reverend Thomas Kelly, Reverend Monsignor James P. Moroni in absentia, Reverend Frank Savola. Fathers, please state your desire. I, I Reverend Thomas K. Kelly, Jones, desire to be received as a magistral chaplain in the Sovereign Military Hospital or Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes, and of Malta. Do you promise to be faithful to the noble traditions of the Order, to participate in its services, to have a special care for the poor and the sick, and to nurture the spiritual lives of the members of the Order as a magistral chaplain? I do so promise. On behalf of His Excellency, the Lieutenant Grand Master, and of the Sovereign Council, I welcome you into this ancient hospitaller order of charity and chivalry and will now present you with the cross of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta as a symbol of the promise you have just made.
the Dames and Knights of Magistral Grace. Each of the following candidates of Magistral Grace to be invested should stand in place and remain standing when your name is called. Dames of Magistral Grace. Diana L. Abuzed. Lucia Barone. Christina D. Beerer. Suzanne L. Bonventre. Patricia D. Kalanka. Evelyn S. Carfano. Queenie Chung. Mary Jo Chopiak. Sheila Sivale. Catherine Mary Colucci. Lisette M. Courier Martinez. Laura, Laura A. Dollahide. Susan H. Essen. Catherine A. Flax Kosecki. Constance M. Franchino. Tracy M. Fratarelli. Catherine W. Frierson. Lola N. Grace. Marissa S. Greeson. Jennifer Howe. Elizabeth W. Keegan. Christina M. Kelly. Karen R. Conce, D.O. Carolyn M. Limon. Helen D. Lowe. Helen T. Lowe, excuse me. Cheryl H. Marino. Elizabeth L. Martin. Mary A. Martocci. Marsha M. McBrien. Michelle B. Myers. Rosalinda M. Moritz. Erica Berrio Vidal Moro. Donna J. Nelson. Eileen M. Newell. Nina V. Nolf. Lisa A. Polina. Phyllis J. Pregiato. Ann C. Preston. No. Bridget F. Queeley. Julie H. Reveille. Tomasina P. Shiro. Lourdes R. Spinola. Dana M. Serena Matson. Kathleen P. Thorez. Lynn W. Toole. Catherine A. Trupiano. Lynn A. Vin Himbergen. Ben Himbergen. And Marian R. Zero. Knights of Magistral Grace, can you please stand when your name is called? Jose Daniel Bascones Ajoas. Ronald H. Blade, MD. Michael A. Bonventre. Daniel P. Braga. Patrick Byrne Broderick, MD. Louis A. Brown, Jr. Daniel P. Burgo, PhD. Anthony Kalanka. David M. Karakta. Anthony M. Fargano. Alfonso G. Chan. Cosmo M. Savale, Jr. Brian J. Clancy. Peter G. Clemente. Robert D. Colucci. John T. Dolahide, D.O. Brian Dupero. Antonio F. Fernandez. Daniel A. C. Fratarelli. Frank A. Frida. Greg Frierson. 
Timothy W. Gamma, Marco P. Gennari, Michael J. Golia, MD, Michael P. Gordon, Robert J. Gutman, Stephen R. Hardy, Jr., Richard P. Howley, Kyle L. Johnson, John W. Jeriga, Christopher P. Kelly, John V. Kiernan, Ph.D., Paul Klimos, Jason A. Labartu, John L. Leibold, Anthony Lamone, Vincent D. Lavienne, Alexander L. Lovstad, Thomas J. Manley, Jr., Michael A. Marino, Herman H. Martin, Jr., Wilfredo J. Martinez, Anthony P. Martocci, Joseph J. Meany, Leonard F. Moritz, Anthony C. Morrow, Douglas S. Nelson, Jeffrey M. Nelson, Paul M. O'Leary, MD, Lorenzo Palladino, MD, Timothy Lee Pullman, DDS, Robert L. Preston, John Campbell Rathborn, James E. Reinecke II, Robert J. Reveille, Amir C. Roach, MD, Rodolfo Savica, MD, PhD, George P. Schwartz, Nexus UC, Richard W. Smith, Hugh M. Smith, Jr., Robert G. Sorsea, Louis S. Spinola, Joseph A. Thorez, John P. Truppiano, Thomas W. Van Hembergen, Arthur Viola, Ron J. Wolford. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you desire? What you request is a grave and serious matter. You wish to become a member of our order, to achieve Christian perfection, and to practice the love of your neighbor. So let us first implore the mercy of God in the intercession of our patrons and of all the saints. We ask His Eminence Cardinal Dolan for a special blessing on those being invested today. Let us pray. O oh God, look graciously down upon these your servants who wish to follow our Lord Jesus Christ in our sovereign order, instill your grace within their hearts and in our hearts. Let us not take false pride in our membership, but rather let us be humble in your service. Amen. Amen. Reception in our order, which you ask for, belongs only to those who commit themselves to follow the banner of Christ. So I ask you, are you ready to follow the banner of Christ and of the order? to witness and defend the Catholic faith, and to do works of charity as the order requires?
We are most pleased to hear your promise of commitment. We accept you as confreres among our number, as servants of our lords, the sick and the poor, and as witnesses of the faith and defenders of the Church. We give you all the rights appropriate to your membership and rank in the Sovereign Order of Malta. We have given you the garment of our order. Wear it as the armor of God and as the mark of being a member of our order, so that it may be for you the robe of salvation. With wisdom, you should look to the past, confront the present, and prepare yourselves for the future. With righteousness, you should deal with public and private matters. With strength, you should demonstrate at every opportunity a greatness of spirit. Hold yourself aloof from avarice and a desire for wealth, lest you endanger your eternal possession of heaven. Behold the cross, and Christ our crucified Lord and King. For our sake he carried the cross and died on it, to free us from the burden of sin and to gain for us life. Whoever wishes to belong to him and to serve him must take up his cross and follow him. Behold the sword, the symbol of the readiness of your predecessors in this chivalric order, even at the risk of their own lives, to defend the faith and to protect widows, children, the helpless, and the needy. What more do you desire? Brothers and sisters, we give you this cross of our order, this sign of Christ's passion, of his love for all. Let it always inspire you in love of your neighbor. Cherish and defend the cross. Should it ever happen that in the battle for Christ and his church, you turn your back on this cross or desert it, then in accordance with the ancient custom of our order, this holy symbol must be taken from you and you must be expelled from our community. In the name of His Excellency Far Marco Luzago, the Lieutenant of the Grand Master, and of the Sovereign Council, and by the virtue of the power designated to me, I invest you in the Sovereign Military Hospitaller Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Robes, and of Malta. Okay. Who's first? Is he coming down? What do I do? Yeah. 
Let us pray. My dear friends, we direct our prayers to our Lord through the intercession of the Most Holy Virgin of Philanimo, St. John the Baptist, of Blessed Fra Gerard, and of all the saints of heaven. For the Holy Catholic Church, that our Lord and God may confirm and protect her, together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and with all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, and with the holy people of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prelate and the chaplains of our order, that they may be filled like St. John the Baptist with constancy, strength, and zeal, and therefore serve him faithfully and beyond reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the flourishing of our order for His Excellency Fra Marco Luzago, Lieutenant of the Grand Master, for its officers and members, and for the members of the Alliance Orders of St. John, that our work may prosper for the glory of God and that no member may ever be forgetful of his or her obligations and that more vocations will be given to our order. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who in the name of the order bring help to the afflicted and mercifully assist their brethren in sickness, hunger, poverty, and ignorance, that God may always enlighten them, protect them, console them in adversity, and grant that their works of charity may bear much fruit in his sight. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those members of the order and their families who are sick, the families of all members of the order, and our beloved Malads, that they may have God's special grace on their pilgrimage of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased members of the order, especially for those who have died during this past year, that our patron saint, John the Baptist, may lead them into everlasting life to receive the rewards of their service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Counting upon the intercession of Mary, our mother, and St. Joseph, her spouse, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Lord, look, O oh Lord, we pray on the surpassing charity of the sacred heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised high upon the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the sacraments of the church, so that won over to the sacred heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints of heaven, we, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To live and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Who is your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
please join in singing the servant song, which can be found in the program.
Let us pray. Made partakers in your most blessed sacrament of charity, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that we may be conformed to Christ here on earth and merit to be co-heirs of his glory in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Jesus, thou hast seen fit to enlist me for thy service among the knights and dames. I humbly, I humbly entreat, entreat thee, thee through the intercession of the most holy of Virgin of Palermo, of St. John the Baptist, the Baptist, of Blessed Gerard, Gerard and, all and all the saints, saints to keep me faithful to the traditions of our order. Be it mine to practice and defend the Catholic, the Apostolic, the Roman faith against sacrilege. Be it mine to practice charity towards my neighbors, especially the poor and the sick. Give me the strength I need to carry out this my resolve, forgetful of myself, learning ever from thy holy gospel a spirit of deep and generous Christian devotion, striving ever to promote God's glory, the world's peace, and all that may benefit the order of St. John of Jerusalem. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing. Now thank we all our God found in the program.